give you some su suggestions and recommendations and touch on three important questions. So stick around for that. One of those questions is how do you pick a good clinic to do the hair transplant? Um, I have tips for you guys, so stay tuned. My country people. I greet you. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. This is week 19. Time is flying, man. I can't believe it. Next week is going to be week 20. But anyways, we're here and let's make this video. Uh, happy Easter. All of you that celebrated Easter yesterday. This is Monday. I told myself I'm going to record today and upload today. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Joel. I go by The Real Joel here on YouTube. And I've been documenting my hair transplant that I did in Turkey four and a half months ago. Um, this channel is a life journey channel and um, I do hair, I do real estate, I do fitness. If you're not following my shorts, make sure to check those out. I do daily posts of workouts that I've been doing to lose weight, get right for the summer. Um, today's uh, episode, I'm going to be going through what I went through from week 18 to 19. i uh, going to put my oils in. Hit that subscribe button, by the way, if you haven't already i'm at 820 plus followers i need to hit a thousand man let's hit the thousand let's do this baby all right and by the way thank you for all the support guys i really appreciate this um this journey it was just something that i thought would help people and i'm so amazed the amount of comments and traction i'm getting from this content so i really appreciate all the effort thanks again okay so week 18 to 19 what have i experienced before I talk about that, let me do the reveal. I don't know if you like the hat. This is a Nigerian hat. I copped it when I went to Abuja. Uh, I think it was my brother that bought it for me. Either way, I love these, man. I paired this off with the Jordan 1s that I got uh, a while ago. Omo, I look fresh, died. But uh, let's go with the hair. Let me show you what it looks like. Wow. Week 18 to 19. So you can see my hair is growing out. I'm gonna cut it next week, which will be uh, month five officially, and see how it looked like. Hopefully the new hair would have completely blended into the old hair and it would be a little um, not obvious that I did a hair transplant. Funny story though, before we get into um, what I experienced. Yesterday I went to uh, the Museum of Natural History in New York with the family, beautiful museum by the way. And I ran into a guy from Brazil that did the hair transplant. He was waiting at the bathroom on the line and I looked at the back of his hair, his head and I saw, you know, the donor area was like, I was like, something is up here. And then I kind of like peeked to the front and I was like, that hairline was just too crispy. Um, so I was like, uh, did you do a hair transplant? He was like, yeah, he did. He did it in Brazil and I was like, oh man, it would be nice to have a conversation with you. So we exchanged the information. So I'll probably bring him on uh, on the show and uh, he'll talk about the experience. He did say one thing though, they cover, um, the health insurance in Brazil covers the procedure in part. I don't know if that's true. So if you're in Brazil or if you're in any other, any other country that the hair transplant is covered by your health insurance, Comment below. I really want to know um, if that's if that's even possible. Definitely not in America because it is a cosmetic, um, not a surgery, but it, I think it will fall under the category of surgery. It is a co cosmetic procedure, um, so it doesn't. Um, it's not covered by health insurance. Anyway, I did the Dumarilla last week, uh, and I was scared that I would have a breakout. I I used the uh, derma stamp. So go check out the video. I'll put a link here. Um, but good news, nothing happened. I didn't have any bumps, I didn't have any pimples, no issues whatsoever. The sensation in the on, on this side of the head is gone. Um, it might pop up again, I don't know, but it's gone. Last week I felt it a little more. Um, one thing you guys have to pay attention to when you're doing the Domorella, don't go too heavy, don't go too hard on it. You gotta be gentle. I noticed that um, I went a little too hard on the back because I felt like I was in neglecting it compared to the sides. Um, so you know, in the, the, the day two, day three, day four, after I did the derma stamp, I was like, oh, that's a little sensitive. So the next time I would do, which we, which would be in week 21, I'll take my time with that. I'll probably go back to the derma roller because the derma stamp, it just takes too long. All right. 
Um, so I will put the essential oils. Let me show you one thing that I bought that I think would be a good tip, a good tool for anyone that's doing this journey to get. Let me show you. Actually, let me just take my camera to go to the bathroom. So one thing, two things that I think is essential when you're doing this um, procedure and you're taking care of your hair, you need to get one of these bottles, all right? So you can put your oils, you can put all your ingredients in. I might even create a shop where I start selling these bottles because I think it's a good value for money. Um, I bought it on Amazon, you get three for about maybe five bucks. So one has the spirit or the alcohol that I use to clean the derma roller. The other one has the oils that I used to put on my hair. So I just spray it on. And then the last one has the uh, minoxidil that I put in the fridge. So all these are just sprayed applications. It makes life much easier. And then it has, and I put a tag on it. You can see the tag on this one. Um, so bottles, you need those. And then you need this, this two sided brush because, um, well, obviously one side is, um, harder than the other. The soft side I use on my sides, on the hair that has been transplanted, and then the harsh side, kind of use it on the old hair, and I use it on my beard too as well. So those are two things that I think anyone, everyone should get. Uh, I do have my oil concoction. You can see here, I add this, I add this, and this is the oils that you get from Hiva Clinic. I put it all in one of these containers, and um, yeah, then there's a Jamaican castor oil. So you do need um, those items. I think for anyone, just as a starter, you need to get those. Let me put the camera here to segue into my next, the next part of the video. I hope you guys find this, this content entertaining <laughs> because uh, it is tough, you know, trying to balance uh, work and family and creating content. And I was even talking about this with a friend of mine who is a big influencer in, in the social media space, that I'm a little stretched thin because I have multiple platforms that I'm sharing on. I share on TikTok. If you haven't uh, followed me on TikTok, please do. Um, it is fit underscore Joel. There I just post most of my fitness content. Um, I've been doing daily workouts and today is gonna be 120 days. So 120 days I've been working out um, the goal was, um, at first, the, the reason I started was because I did a hair transplant and I couldn't go to the gym. And then uh, the New Year's hit and I was like, you know what, I'm going to save money. I'm going to cancel my membership. Start working out here in the, in the living room because I do have a remote, um, uh, a hybrid work schedule. I go to the office twice a, twice a week. If you don't know, I work for Amazon. I am a senior uh, um senior design manager, um, my background is in architecture. So yeah, I have a, somewhat of a good work-life ha harmony with Amazon. Um, and I started working out at home and you know I, I started trying to focus on my diet because I do have high blood pressure and I sleep with a CPAP machine. I have a sleep apnea. So it's a combination of things I just felt, you know what, this year, let me try to focus on me, my health, you know. I paid a lot of money for the hair so I might as well just work on the, <laughs> the total package. Uh, so that's what it is. I'm actually guess how old I am. Let me let me put the camera down so you can you can <laughs> you can you can judge for yourself. So this is what I look like. Put this up a little. So, I don't know, guess how old I am. Comment below. If you get it, I'll send you the brush and I'll send you um, the bottles. So, going back here, I do spend a good, um, good, uh, good um, amount of time uh, on social media and creating content that I'm trying to consolidate all these things into one platform. Uh, I, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Geo Studio, where I draw and sell art from time to time. I'm on YouTube, as you see here, and then I'm on TikTok. 
um, I had an old Instagram account. People that know me knew that account. That was a fuckboy account. Oh my, shall we walk where I did do for that account? Jesus Christ. And I'm trying, I deactivated it. I'm trying to reactivate it, but I know say my wife, Nugu Gree. Uh, I used to travel a lot back in the day when I was single. You know, it, it was a <laughs> rough, rough times. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm trying to consolidate all of these into one platform so you get the full me and not bits and pieces of me. Um, so if you have any suggestions, comment below. If you're a good social media strategist, let me know. I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay money for that um, because I think it's just too much at this point. Can't keep creating content all the time. But anyways, um, that's it for week 18 to 19. Like I said, nothing unusual. Dormerla went went fine. I showed you what I use for my uh, um, oils, where I put it in, and, and the brush I use. So those are all good stuff. Now to the question. Let me get my phone. Um, so so I don't take too much of you guys' time, I'm going to breeze through these questions very quickly. So the first one was, um, when was the best time to do this uh, procedure? When is the best time? In my opinion, I think there are two times, uh, October, November, and February, March. And here's my, here's my reasoning. One. Uh, you want to avoid the hot weather. You want to avoid hot temperatures. So um, if you do it in uh, October, November, you're, if you're coming from America or a temperate area, you're going to be leading into the months where it's cool, the air is, is dry, and you don't have any possibility of too much moisture and heat in the air that could cause um, infection, right? Two, the holiday seasons, especially if you're working and you want to take time off, you can combine those vacations you get from um, Thanksgiving or Christmas into you know your recovery time because you, you don't want to be walking around too much into the office or outside with the hair. And then um, it's off peak. Those like October, November is kind of like off peak in Turkey if you're going to Turkey. So the the, the um, flights are cheaper. I paid 700 bucks for a flight to Turkey in November because no one is going to Turkey in November. Uh, and then I think the last one for me at least was, um, it's not like a big celebratory kind of month um, because you know usually when you have these festive times, people drink a lot. You know, um, summer is when people drink a lot, especially in New York or spring. People start going out for brunches and you want to avoid alcohol because it just helps recovery. So if you want to time that um, procedure, I think it's best to do it October, November or February, March. Okay. Then the next question was, um, oh yeah. Okay. This one, someone asked, do, are you put under when you do this procedure? No, I was not put under. Putting under means they, did, they give you anesthesia and you fall asleep and they do the procedure. No, I was not. Um, they give you local anesthesia and um, you're awake the whole time, the whole eight hours. Um, I would not recommend going to a place where they put you under in Turkey because um, that sounds a lot too intrusive. Um, and again, you don't know what they're doing when you're under. If you've gone under when they did the surgery, comment below. I've never heard of that before, um, but I think that's risky. So uh, make sure <laughs> that you know the kind of anesthesia they're giving you before you pay, okay? So that was segue into my last uh, question was, um, how do I pick a good clinic? And this is one that I struggled with because um, when I went through the internet, there wasn't any one definitive place that told me this is what you have to look for. So let me give it to you. The first thing obviously is price. So you look for a, a, a clinic that works with your budget. After price, you want to balance price and your comfort level or how well they're doing, right? You don't want to go all the way cheap and then they ruin your hair. So by the way to figure that out is to see their online presence, read their reviews, go on Reddit. Reddit is a very good place to see what people are saying, real people. Check their social media, their social media presence. They have to have good social media presence. If they don't, it's either they're bad or they're, they're new. And if they're new, that's a bigger risk. So I went on TikTok first to see 
what they were doing and then I went on Instagram to see what they're doing as well. A lot of before and afters you see on Instagram, a lot of engagement on selling you see on TikTok. Uh, so through those two platforms, I was able to decipher from cost and, you know, a clinic review, which I wanted to go with. I did start reaching out to four or five at a time and they will keep you and they'll put you in touch with a consultant that you can talk through uh, WhatsApp. So again, price and reviews. The next thing you want to look for is what they're offering you in the money that you spend. So the package, is it hotel? How many nights? Is it um, transportation to and from the airport? How many times? Where is it located in Turkey relative to where the actual procedure is? So you wanna check that in a map. Okay, is it located in the Asian side of Turkey or is it lo located in the Euro side of Turkey? And where is the actual procedure gonna take place? So you wanna check all those things. How flexible are they with Payment? Is it cash? Is it credit card? Um, how open are they with negotiation? So these are the things that you kind of want to like start checking the boxes with um, the clinics. And if you guys want me to create like an Excel spreadsheet on the boxes that the clinics need to check before you make the purchase or before you make your first payment, comment below. I can do that too as well. Anything that you guys need, I'm happy to help because I want people to have a successful experience when they're doing this hair transplant. Um, so another thing that you have to also pay attention to when you're um, looking for a clinic is interactions with people that have done it before. So if you go to the comment section where you know, they post, find someone that has used that clinic. For example, I've used Hiva Clinic, so I could be a good resource that you can ask direct questions to. Um, luckily for me, uh, Hiva Clinic, they specialize in Afro hair. That's also another important thing to see what they specialize in. And I found someone in the comment sections that I just asked like two or three questions and they just told me. I didn't want to be too intrusive because they had a private account. But for me, you know, I'm on YouTube. I'm telling you everything you need to know. You can ask me any question. So I think those are like the basic things you need to look out for um, when you're picking a clinic. You know, price, reviews, uh, what you, what's offered in a package, level of negotiation, uh, payment method, and most importantly, if they're going to put you under or not, right? That you want details of the procedure that you're going to that you're paying for, right? Um, number of grafts too, uh, that's also important. So all these things you want to sort of tally them up, give them a score, and then see which one you 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 pick. You also want to have options. So you're not locked into one and you feel um, pressured into pain because they will pressure you. They will pressure you into paying quick. They will say something like, oh, there's a sales going on and it'll end in October. So you have to pay in August because after, uh, after the end of August, uh, September, October, the price will go up by another 500. Don't believe that. Just tell them you're still doing your research. Other, other um, clinics are coming out at this price and you're at this price and you want to see how you can bridge that gap. So take your time with that kind of stuff. And again, hit me up if you have, if you have any questions. So that's it for week 19. Next week, I will get a haircut in week 20. It's a big milestone, five months. So stick around uh, and let's keep growing this channel. Hit that subscribe button, share this video and as, as always, stay blessed guys. Cheers.